Hi, Carol and Kristen here with Luminous Ministries, and today we're going to talk about Catholic Christian disciplines. Isn't that just what you wanted to talk about? <laughs> you know, I think when we hear the word discipline, we're automatically like, oh no, I hate it. But at the same time, I think like we know it's so necessary and we're even drawn to it. Like for example, I knew a kid who went with me to Interlochen and he practices instrument every day for like an hour. Yeah. And I was just so like in awe of that because I know how hard that is and like what discipline that takes and how right. you gotta build it into your schedule and be really deliberate right. and intentional about it. But at the same time, I was like, oh, man, it's so hard. I was like, I need to do that, too. And that's so good. It you know, good. and I think that that's the whole thing with the spiritual life. It's discipline makes it so you're not always just going with what you feel like right. doing. It's what you know you need to do. And you get into the habit, you know, mm -hmm. so habits build virtue and character yeah. and and that is what we all are striving for. So it's very important that we do develop good Catholic Christian disciplines. Yeah. And even if, as Kristen says, we don't feel like it, particularly maybe if we don't yeah. feel like it. And so, we, in fact, we have a strategy for that that is is so simple. It's like, it's like silly simple, really silly simple, and even just like super simple. So it's so simple that, are you ready for this? Because it's so simple that if you don't listen carefully, you might miss it all together. <laughs> we don't want you to miss it because actually, I'm gonna get, let you in on a little secret. This isn't just a strategy that is good for spiritual disciplines. It's actually a strategy, I think, that is good for any discipline. It's oh, good for, for sure. any goal that you want to set for yourself of any kind. Mm -hmm. And so do pay attention because it's only just two words. And I'm about to recite those two words in just a second. So make sure you're with me. Are you with me? I think they're with me. <laughs> so <laughs> They're on the edge of their seats. <laughs> I enticed you to pay attention here. <laughs> so the two words are simply just begin. Mm -hmm. Just begin. And you know, that, that seems so simple. Mm -hmm. And yet I think a lot of people struggle to just begin. And mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one of the um, a spiritual discipline that I've been working on lately. Mm -hmm. We have a program that's called The Mystic in You. And it's all about mysticism and the mystics. And we're going to be giving that program here shortly in, in Cleveland, outside of Cleveland, Ohio. And so I've just been like, you know, brushing up. And at, by brushing up, I mean, I've just been really delving into the mystics and mysticism, which has always been a fascinating topic to me. So for the last couple of months, I've just been doing a lot of extra reading and, and praying. And, you know, um, without being, you know, spoiler alert here, one of the disciplines that is recommended if you are interested in, in uh, delving into a life of, of Catholic Christian mysticism is to be quiet before the Lord, is to have periods of silence and solitude in your day. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's actually comes kind of natural to me from the standpoint that I am somebody who really embraces silence and solitude and some of you who know me really well might say really that's surprising to me <laughs> but the truth of the matter is uh it's kind of my default setting for people who really know me like you mm -hmm. um and my husband they would say yeah she she has to have a certain amount of uh, total silence and solitude in her day or quite frankly i don't function very well but there's a difference between having silence and solitude and actually doing what many of the mystics did where they were just in complete silence before the Lord. And so one of the disciplines that is recommended is to just sit quietly in the presence of God for 10 minutes a day. Just 10 minutes of complete silence and solitude. Mm -hmm. So I, you know... Being that silence and solitude are kind of my thing, my default setting, I'm thinking, well, then, you know, how hard can that be? I've done it before. Yeah, you know, whatever. So, but recently I've made it a daily discipline of 10 minutes of total silence, mm -hmm. total solitude in the presence of God. And this is a discipline that I'm working on. So with, going with the strategy of just begin, uh, like two or three weeks ago, I decided, well, stop thinking about it. Stop talking about it and do it. Just do it. So I did, mm -hmm. and I have been doing it, and I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always easy, and in, inevitably, I'll get started, and like 
uh, my nose will itch or my phone will, <laughs> will ring <laughs> or something. I forget to turn my phone off or whatever. The distractions begin. The distractions begin. begin. Mm -hmm. And if it's not something physical, it's for sure something mental that's mm -hmm. going on in your mind. Yeah. And I'm trying to get rid of those distractions. And so I have, um, I have two strategies that I use within the strategy of just begin. And one of those is to pay attention to my breath. So breathing is very much a part of how I commune with God. And then I kind of like visualize him in my space. Mm -hmm. And this morning when I was doing uh, my, my discipline of just being in quiet solitude with God, I actually visualize God as kind of a vapor, a mist uh, all around me and kind of just, and as I would breathe in, I would uh, visualize the vapor just kind of, you know, going into my body and just surrounding my heart and my soul. And, and then, you know, then I would exhale and, mm -hmm. and that vapor would come out of me. So mm -hmm. Christ in me brings Christ out of me. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a discipline that I have been really working on. Have I been 100% successful with this discipline? No, no. I, I have had a couple of days that I've missed altogether or where every possible distraction made me crazy. Um, but I've, I've been figuring out ways to do that as well. So that's been helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And so here we go. So this is one of my spiritual disciplines that I just began. And I would encourage you to try it as well as if you'd like. If 10 minutes seems just completely overwhelming, Maybe start with five and see how that goes. For some of you, ten won't be nearly enough. You'd be you'd rather have fifteen or twenty or maybe even a half an hour or longer if you're already in the practice of this kind of a spiritual discipline. But I can tell you that being silent and truly quiet, and you have to put yourself in a place of solitude. Mm -hmm. So don't try to do this on the school playground, for example. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not a good idea. You're setting yourself up for failure. Uh, so you find a quiet place and space, and you know, you kind of just um, maybe bless yourself, use some holy water. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a candle lit. Maybe you have uh, a picture of Jesus in front of you. A lot of times when I do this, I have my eyes closed, but sometimes my eyes are open. It just depends, but it has been really uh, fruitful, and I love, I'm, I look very forward to the time. So, Kristen, what is a, first of all, what do you think of the strategy of Just Begin? Let's start there. What do no, you think, I think of it's that? So, no, I think it's so good, because um, I think oftentimes that's the hardest part. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, just making yourself do something is the hardest part. Once you yeah. have begun, then it's not so difficult. You're like, okay, I'm in it, I'm going now. Yeah. <clears throat> But I had found that in the spiritual discipline that I'm really trying to make daily, which is so crazy that I find this to be such a struggle, but I really want to pray the rosary daily. And it has been such an ebb and flow thing for me. Like, yeah. I was like really going strong and then like got away from it. And you know, it's something I think about every day that either I'm like, bad, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, that I'm like, okay, good job. You did it today. You know, whatever. But the funniest thing too, even not only just beginning, like you yeah. said, but even I will find in the beginning, kind of like you were saying, how the whole nose is itching, whatever, right. that it takes you a little bit of time to get into it even. Yeah. So like just beginning, but even beginning the prayer, you know, so you got your rosary bead, you got everything, you're ready to go. And then you start praying and it, it often takes me almost like the first decade to like really get into it. Even yeah. though like I like to think about a different intention on every bead. So I am already thinking about stuff. But it's almost like you got to get through the distractions and everything yeah. else to like really start to feel like one with the prayer, yeah, and one with God, and um, and then from there, it's so funny that you know it's such a struggle because I feel like God is so speaking to me when I'm praying the Rosary. Like things mm -hmm. will come to my mind, and I'm like, that is not me. And two, like I need to do that. Like I need to do something <laughs> with what just came my yeah. way. Yeah. And so it is something that makes me feel so close to God, but I perpetually don't feel like doing it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so the whole notion of just beginning is, I think, the hardest part. And I do think that that's like almost, you know, where Satan is pushing back the most. Yeah. He doesn't want you to begin, you know? And so if you do get over that hurdle and just begin, right. you're there. Like the battle is pretty much won. <laughs> you know, uh, you know that dad and I uh, like to pray the rosary together, particularly when we're traveling in the car together. One of us will just say, um, you know, do you want to pray the rosary or let's pray the rosary? And of course, 
even if you're not in the mood to pray for it, because it's going to take you a solid 15 or more minutes to pray the rosary. 15? Holy cow! What are you guys doing? Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, no, you no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I've never really timed our uh, time this, but you I'm know, mostly, 15, I'm mostly teasing. Mostly teasing. 15 or 20 minutes. I'm just guessing that that's about how long it takes. So, but even so, 15 or 20 minutes is a piece of time. No, it's a piece sure. of time. So. You know, it's kind of interesting that whenever, it'll be either one of us, like either I'll say it or my husband will say, you know, let's pray the rosary. And neither one of us, no matter what we may be feeling mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. will ever turn that down. Yeah. We'll never, neither one of us have well, ever yeah, said, feel pretty no, bad. No, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So, so even if like, for example, dad says to me, Carol, do you want to pray the rosary? I know he's going to pray it. And I'm not mm -hmm. gonna I'm not gonna let him pray the rosary. I'm not gonna I'm let not, him out pray me. I'm not gonna <laughs> let him, you know, and not pray with him. I'm not gonna do that. So we will we will just begin. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm not in the proper frame of mind, I get in the proper frame of mind by the time I'm you know, a decade or so into the rosary. Yeah. And by the time I finish the rosary, feeling like that was good space. That was, there's nothing. The other night we were driving and we were praying the rosary and I, the thought came to me, there is nothing better we could be doing with each other right now yeah. than to be praying the rosary together. Yeah. I feel the and same. And that's what's so great. I often feel that way too. So that's yeah. like, what? Gotta make it this habit. <laughs> this has gotta you know, begin. <laughs> old habits die hard. You yeah. know, what can you yeah. say? But you know, the same is true of, say, for example, the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy, which is a discipline of mine that I started probably, I don't know, 10 years or so ago. I started reading about St. Faustina. I actually had a really good friend of mine by the name of Cheryl who told me about St. Faustina and the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy. Mm -hmm. And I was so fascinated with the story and um, was gifted by another Polish friend of mine with the actual, with St. Faustina's diary. And you can't hardly read about St. Faustina and read the diary of St. Faustina and not be like supercharged to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. And who among us does not need Divine Mercy? And we are living in a time, a, a day and an age where um, the need for Divine Mercy is so ever present that it, I believe that it is a wonderful chaplet to be praying. So that is another discipline of mine, and it's the same thing. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I know I need to be praying the chaplet. I'm not really, I'm not really in the proper frame of mind. And I guess the thing that we're both saying here is that you don't wait until you feel like you're in the proper frame of mind, or until all the stars align perfectly mm -hmm. before you do. You start a spiritual discipline. You do it because you know that it is where God wants to meet you mm -hmm. and you know that it is going to help you and you know that God is in it and you know that you will be receiving graces from you know participating in that in that discipline and we need grace to get out of bed in the morning to mm -hmm. take a step to mm -hmm. take a breath we couldn't do any of those things without God's grace so the whole concept of disciplining yourself and having certain spiritual disciplines. If you have a discipline that you really like, like maybe it's praying the Stations of the Cross, mm -hmm. uh, is a discipline that you've developed, or maybe it's you know going to Mass three, four, five times a week is a spiritual discipline. Uh, maybe you know you can name some of your favorite spiritual disciplines. But... Well, I think some, maybe not my favorite, but some that, uh, well, your favorite in terms of it's really good, but like making a habit of going to confession, you know, yeah, one that yeah. is another one of those tough ones, I think, right. you know, where like you just need to just begin because yep. it's never going to get any easier, yep. but like you're so glad you did, right. you know? And, and going back to the whole concept of just begin, mm -hmm. you know, it might be a situation where you say, well, the first step I'm going to take is I'm going to go get in the car. Yeah. And then I'm getting the car, and now I'm going to drive myself to the church because I know this is at the time that reconciliation is being offered. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my last time was, uh, you know, not too long ago, and I was literally sitting in the pew at church, and I knew that reconciliation was going on, and I'm like, just get up. Get up, mm -hmm. s stand up, mm -hmm. and walk back to the confessional. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I did. I just stood up, and I wasn't really in the mood. And, mm -hmm. but I like, you need to do this. And mm -hmm. so I stood up and I walked to the back and by the time you stand up and walk to the back, then of course you're going to do the next right thing, which is to, 
you know, walk into the confessional and mm -hmm. have this beautiful moment of grace, which we call reconciliation, which mm -hmm. I always like to say, when is the last time you went to reconciliation and then walked out and said, oh, I wish I would have, kicking a pew saying, I wish I would have never done that. What a terrible waste of my time. Have you ever? No, I have never. Have you, Kristen, ever said what a waste of my time after being no. in reconciliation? No. no. It's a beautiful sacrament and one that is such a gift to us. And so that is a, another wonderful spiritual discipline. And as you say, we just need to begin. So today's uh, video is just about developing spiritual disciplines. And, and no matter how difficult they may be or maybe they're not as difficult, the important thing is that you just begin. Even if you aren't perfectly successful at whatever your goal is, whatever that spiritual discipline is, the very fact that you just began and you made an effort is going to be um, warm, and heartwarming to God. He's going to be very happy about that. And oftentimes that. when you just begin, you see it through. You do. Because that's often the hardest part. It is. It is. So if you're feeling inspired by today's video and you want to support the work of our ministry, please visit www.luminousministries.com slash donate. Thanks so much for being with us today, everybody. And we hope that you will find a spiritual discipline to begin today and just begin. begin.